In the previous videos, we used Wave and Pi Audio to read a WAV file, and then we used the Pi Audio to stream that uh, WAV file to the sound output device. And we found that we could do it either in a blocking mode, which basically prevents the execution of the further parts of the program, or we could use a non-blocking mode. We created a callback function that started a second thread, and that second thread just dealt with streaming the output to the sound device. What we're going to do in this video, however, is just try and find a way of using PsychoPi itself to place sounds. Now, it's a little bit tricky when we do this because PsychoPi has a number of backends. It supports three different uh, backends, so behind the scenes uh, libraries in dealing with sound. Uh, these are called PyO, Sound Device, or Pi Game. So um, this is just the documentation from um, PsychoPi 3 that we're looking at here. It's nothing special. So go to Google, type in PsychoPi Sound, and you should get something like this coming up. What we're going to do is set the preference. What we need to do first before we open up the sound, uh, before we import the sound, sorry, is we have to say, okay, dear PsychoPi, this is my preference for which of these three backends I want to use. So we have to do this before we even import the PsychoPy sound module. So from PsychoPy, import prefs. I believe I've just got a previous version on this window here. Yeah, import prefs. Now let's print. Let's see what prefs preferences we have access to. So we'll start this program, Python demo uh, underscore one dot py. What sorts of preferences do we have? Oh, looks like we've got a fair number. Can you see that? Yeah. So we've got some general preferences. So wind type using piglet, units, normalized, full screen, false, allow, GUI, all that. Here we go. We've got a prefs.general, audio lib, um, and we've, our preferences are currently sound device, Pyo, and Pi game. So this looks like a dictionary. It's returning a dictionary. And we've also got some coder preferences and some builder preferences and some connections preferences. Okay, that's good. We know what we have access to. So this is uh, for our experiment here where we're trying to use PsychoPy to make sound. We have access to all three of these. What you will need to do on your on your build, on your computer, is identify which of the libraries, audio libraries, you have access to. So um, we can comment that out. If you needed to set your preferences, so I almost forgot, how would you go about doing that? Well, what we'll do is we'll get that dictionary value. So prefs.general, uh, what is it? It is audio lib spell it correctly, audio lib equals, and then we'll say we only want to use sound device. So if we now print out the prefs, mm -mm -mm, this should hopefully, if I've spelt it all correctly, uh, have updated that. So let's have a look, audio lib, sound device. Okay, so you see, that's how you go about changing your preferences. Notice how we're doing this right at the start. Um, we can get rid of that because we have access to the sound device. We're doing this before we even pull in the um, sound library. So from PsychoPy, from PsychoPy, import sound. We also will need to import core to do some of the timing. And we'll get into that in a little bit. So what do we do? Well, let's have a quick look back at the documentation here. We're going to use a sound device backend. It's the way of the future according to the documentation. So let's stick with that. And what do we need to do? <clears throat> uh, we need to import all of this stuff here. So here's a typical example here. So let's just cut and paste that in. We'll go here. Uh, we'll create a sound, uh, sound object. So sound equals, and then we'll control V. We'll save all that. And then we'll get Atom Beautifier to beautify all this for us. So that's too far out there. So let's go back here. And then that's too far out there. That's too far out there. That's too far out there. There we go. All right, so we've got sound equals sound dot backend sound device dot sound device sound. This is really, really long and really confusing. Um, 
don't worry, we'll go through a way of shortening that right down. We're going through the long way of doing this now, just so you know how to go about um, accessing the particular backend should it be required. So what do we do? We have to give it a value. So we could use the letter name. So think of a piano keyboard. You start at a concert piano, it's got 88 notes, I believe. You start at lower A, so A0 up to, I think, C8, seven or eight octaves. Anyway, so uh, we could use the letter value. So we say, hey, we want middle C. So that's using the middle C on the piano keyboard. Alternatively, if you know the frequency that you want to use, so let's say you want to use concert pitch A or you wanted to um, use uh, middle C, which I think is 125 hertz, you could input the actual frequency that you want there. So 440 hertz is concert pitch. Seconds, that's pretty self-explanatory. How many seconds do you want this to run for? So we'll put one second. Octave, so lower sounds would start at zero, the zeroth octaves up to the seventh or eighth octave. So we'll just put middles. Uh, if you're going to name name the um, name the letter note, so we don't need that because we're not going to do that. We're actually giving it the frequency that we want. So let's go back here. Sample rate. So remember in our Audigy sorry, when we used Audacity, we created our files at 48,000 hertz. Block size, again, remember we um, were going to read out a certain number of samples and then send that to the sound output device. So we'll make this say, say something like 4,800. I'm going to make this a multiple of this. So one tenth. Pre-buffer, let's have a look. What does pre-buffer mean? So pre-buffer says, do you want to store all of your uh, data file before you play it, or do you want to just pretty much just squirt it straight out to your sound output device? So think about what you want to do there. One second is not so long. Let's give it a shot. Hamming, now what does hamming mean? Remember how in Audacity, so here is the sound file that we created in Audacity. It's one second long, we created it using a white noise generator. And I said back in the previous video, hey, we need to be careful with the start, so the onset, and the stop, the offset portions of our sound file. Why? Because remember we went from no sound to 100% sound right at the start. What that can do is introduce non-linearities in the sound itself, and then they're gonna be encoded by the cochlea and the auditory system, and you're gonna get some weird things going on, some pops, clicks, and whistles potentially. So the way that we did it very roughly in Audacity was we created a fade in. Remember, a linear rise, rise time and a linear fall time. That's the words that we use, rise, fall. So we went from zero to 100%, in the first, what's that, 100 milliseconds here. And then we spent that last 100 milliseconds going from 100% down to 0%. We used a linear rise fall time. Now, hamming is a slightly more complicated way of dealing with the rise and fall time. And it actually uses what's called a hand function, okay, or a hanning window. We're windowing the function at the start. So what, how does the hand function look? Well, here we go. If we have a look to our audacity at the back there, I think you can still see that, yep, good. You see we've got a linear rise fall time between zero and one. What a hand window does is it basically goes between zero and one using a cosine function. And so this is the sort of function that we actually use in auditory labs quite often, we use a handing window. We can use a Blackman-Harris window, um, we could use a Hamming window, we could use a linear window. You need to think about the onset and the offset of your sound uh, stimuli because you will introduce distortions and you will not get a good pure signal into the ear if you do not window your ear, um, if you do not window your sound. So this is what we're going to do is we're going to introduce essentially a hand window. It's not going to do all of the function Right? It's only going to take from 0 to 1 and apply that to the start, and then it will take from 1 to 0 at the end and apply that to the end. So that's the hand, handing window. Now it says hamming window. 
because um, it, they've preserved it because the existing code uses handing. So it's just backward, backwards compatibility for people who are graybeards who have used this for years and years and years. Let's go back to our sound file. Start time and stop time. Um, whereabouts in that sound stimulus do you want to start and stop? So if you want to start at the beginning, put zero. If you want to stop at the end, you put minus one to stop at the end. If you wanted to start, say, halfway through, so in this case, we've got a one second long signal, you wanted to start at half a second, you'd put 0.5. So here you can select whereabouts in your stimulus you want to start and stop. Name an auto log. Um, you can name this stimulus and you can auto log it to some, uh, probably some experimental output file, SIDAT or a pickle file potentially. So there's our sound object. What do we need to do? Well, sound.play, it's pretty straightforward. So we wanna play that sound. Hey, so let's give it a shot. So demo1.py, here we go. So we'll, haven't hit enter yet, we'll hit enter. Ah, remember we're coming through the, uh, the headphones. So hopefully you can hear this. Hmm, what happened? Let's try that again. Huh, nothing came out. Why? What we have to do is wait. So we do a core dot wait. And we have to, we should wait for as long as our stimulus. So stimulus is one second. So excuse me, we'll wait for one second. What do we get out? Hopefully you heard that. We'll play it again. Okay, let me just see if that played. Yep, good. So there we go. We've now created a sound. It's at 440 hertz and it's for one second. We've set the sample rate uh, and we can do that as many times as we want now. Remember, we're gonna stop this video here, but I just want you to remember, make sure you check your preferences before you import your sound library. If your preferences do not match the back end that you want to use, you'll get an error and you will not be able to progress. So just see what you need to do before you import your sound module. The other thing, the tricky thing that we need to remember is once you hit play, make sure you also wait after that. So then you get a chance to play that sound file. All right, so we'll leave this video here. In the next video, we're gonna figure out how do we play a sound file that we've created elsewhere. So remember, we've created that noise stimulus from before. So uh, we'll leave this video here. I'll see you in the next video. It should be out pretty much straight away after this video. All right, best of luck.